Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to In The Game For Ukraine, which is a live stream. We well, should probably know what it is if you clicked on it, right? A live stream <laughs> fundraiser in order to raise money for the British Red Cross Ukraine Crisis Appeal. I'm Julia Hardy. And I am Aoife Wilson. And we have a ton of professional games actors coming in to reprise some of their top roles in your favorite games today. You must be the one we fairies call the pure-hearted one. The one the legends say will save our world. So anyway, that means I better get you over to our world and have you get rid of Shadar for us. All right with you? Me? But how can I? Don't fret, man. It's a big responsibility, I know, but you'll be all right, especially with me to help you. Oh, pure-hearted one, will you please come and save our world? No. This is why they say never work with children. But I don't know anything about your world. Look at this place. It's amazing. So this is your world. That's right. A whole nother world. Let's be off, shall we? The boy who will save the world. But unfortunately for him, his light is yet a mere candle in the blackness. Indeed. He may be the child the prophecies speak of, but he is a child nonetheless. Yet these humans can be disturbingly powerful. Do be careful out there now, will you? You don't stand a chance. Why did you set out on this journey in the first place? It's my mom. I have to save her. That's why I brought you here, innit? You might just be able to stop him, see? You really think I can? Of course you can! You are the pure-hearted one! And the legends say that the pure-hearted one will drive away the darkness! So, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. Uh, it was developed, or it was released for the PlayStation 3. I can't believe. Okay, we're I, old. I mean, in 2011, uh, published um, in Western regions by Bando, Na Bando Namkai. Namkai? Bando, Bandai Namco. Gosh, yes, words they are switched, hard. Switch in January 2013. Uh, reading today, uh, we have uh, Stefan. Yeah, yeah, Stefan Rodri. Yeah. Stefan Rodri as the brilliant fairy Drippy. I love that name. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, obviously, um, uh, Oliver was originally voiced by uh, Adam Wilson. Uh, um, obviously, was nominated for awards. Unfortunately, he can't be here today. So yes. the very wonderful Claire Corbett is standing in. <laughs> and uh, I can't wait because the best thing about this was everyone just always said it like drippy. drippy. You could say it in a super love Welsh. It, yeah. Take Sorry, we're, we're digressing. We'll do this while <laughs> you're doing your thing. <laughs> Bye. Take it away. Um, just hi, I'm Damien Goodwin, one of Side UK's uh, senior senior performance director, and um, together with Mark Healy, um, I directed the original production of Nina Cooney. Uh, but today I won't be directing, but will be reading in the stage directions and scene headings, um, so that that you know where we are and uh, in the scenes. We've just had a flashback to the last time Oliver saw his mum. Her last words were, we'll always be together, Oliver, always, always. Back in the present, in Oliver's room, Oliver holds the doll in his hands. Mommy. Tears begin to well up again from Oliver's eyes. Come back, please. The tears that fall from Oliver's eyes grow larger and larger. <laughs> When those tears land on the doll, and the doll begins to emit a strange light. <gasps> Whoa! Ah! Ah! The doll distorts and changes shape until it transforms itself into a strange-looking fairy. It's drippy. <laughs> What's all this, eh? Huh? Curse lifted, is it? Tidy, I'm free, free! Drippy jumps up and down for joy. Huh? 
What just happened? You may well ask, my lad. You just witnessed the rebirth of Drippy, Lord High, uh, Lord of the Fairies. Um, who? Oh, what are you, deaf or something? Drippy, Lord High, Lord of the Fairies, I said, didn't I? Drippy. That's right. Craggy, I'm sick to my teeth of you were snivelling and moaning. Pathetic it is. A proper crybaby bunting you are. Three days, man. Three whole days. I mean, I'd been sad before, but crying for three whole days, I'm surprised there's a drop of water left in you. You're a big boy, man. Three days is... Well, it's unheard of. What? I... Uh... Oh dear, bit flummoxed, a wee bit lost for words. Not to worry, man. I got all the answers. Oh, but uh, prepare yourself. Explaining all this is going to take a while. Ready? Mm hmm. Tidy. I like your style. Very uh, honest, anyway. Stay that way, okay? Take you far, it will. Right, on with the show. Okay. See, it's like this, see? What it is, is there's more worlds out there than this one by you. There's what you might call parallel worlds, see? They're like worlds along by the side of your one. And one of those worlds is my world. That's right, a whole nother world. Another world? Oh, it's quick of you. And I, that is the Lord High Lord of the Fairies. The reason I'm by you in this world of you was, well, it's because there's a proper bad apple trying to upset the peace of both our worlds. See, Shada, the dark jinn, his name is. And what he did was he took over people's hearts and spread war and ruin all over our world. Tried to stand up to him, I did. And he turned me into a flipping doll and kicked me out of our world and into you as the rotter. Uh-huh. And then you went and cried all over me and poof, the curse was lifted, just like that. Which makes me think you must be the one we fairies call the pure-hearted one. The one the legends say will save our world. Just goes to show you can't judge a book by its cover, huh? So anyway, that means I'd better get you over to our world and have you get rid of Shadar for us. All right with you? What? Me? But how can I... Don't fret, man. It's a big responsibility, I know. But you'll be all right, especially with me to help you. But I... Oh, want me to ask you properly, do you? Fair dues. Why? Oh, pure-hearted one, will you please come and save our world? After this eloquent bequest, Drippy pricks up his ears, waiting for Oliver's answer. I, uh... No. Sorry, I must have misheard you. What did you say? Go on once more, but louder. I won't do it. I, uh, I mean, I, I can't do it. <laughs> this is why they say never to work with children. I ask nicely, and you give me a hearty yes, sir. That's how this works, see? Gee whiz, that would be swell, you say. It's just how these things are done. It's, it's tradition. Oh, how am I supposed to work with this? It's like he's never read a story in his life. But I don't know anything about your world. And I just can't right now. What? Because your mum dropped dead? Huh? Yeah. You got a photo of her? Uh... Hurry up! Well, anyway, I haven't got all day. Oh, OK. Oliver goes to his desk, picks up a photo frame and brings it back to Drippy. Let's see now. Blimey. It can't be. But then it can't be a coincidence, neither. What is it? That's the great sage Alicia, that is. Then we might just be able to save her. Your mum, I mean. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh. You ready for another earful? Uh huh. The souls of people in your world and my world are connected, which means people from over by you have another version of themselves over by there, called a soulmate, see? And people with soulmates can even look like each other. Now, you a man, well, she shared a soul with the great sage Alicia. A proper talent she was. Huh? So my mom was a, s a sage? But how does that help us save her? Well... Alicia tried to take on the dark jinn, but they say Shadar's power was too much for her, and he trapped her in this dark jewel called the Soul Snare. If that's what, re if that's really what happened, then the link between hers and you and Mam's souls would have been cut off. But if you could free Alicia from the Soul Snare, it just might fix the link, and who knows, it might even bring your Mam back. Is that really true? Well, I can't be sure now, but it's possible, yeah. 
Wait, how do you know all this, Mr. Drippy? You've been a doll this whole time. Ah, now there's clever. If you good question, lad. <laughs> it's like this, see. I'm not the only fairy. Even though I was stuck by you, my buddies were keeping me abreast of all the goings on over there. How? Well, I suppose it's what you might call telepathy. Mm. Uh, and that's not all. I was sending my lordly orders back over there too, having them spy on Shadar and that, you know. Tidy, huh? Hmm? What is it? I'll... I'll do it. I'll come to your world. I'll come with you and save my mom. Oh, that's marvellous! You might be doing it for all the wrong reasons, but if it saves our world, I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Tidy! We better get going then. Chop, chop! Okay, but how do we get to your world? Oh, curious, are we? All right, I'll tell you. First thing we need is a drop of magic. Go and have a dig around in the fireplace. There's something hidden in there, so nosy parkers won't find it. The fireplace? But why would anybody hide something in there? That's for me to know, and you to find out. Look lively! <laughs> Fade to black. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so I guess one of the things that we... Okay, first of all, that was amazing. I was a big fan of Nina Cooney. Um, but also... Oh, yeah. we have a little oh, here. Yes, we have our own. Um, I suppose if you... I guess we don't often see what you do in the booth. It's so it's physical. physical. You're yeah. physically totally different. Like, you make your clay, you make yourself really small and yeah. childlike. It's yeah, it's, it's fascinating, actually, to watch. Oh. Yeah, I've never even really thought of it, but yeah, I suppose you, just, you do. You just... I mean, it's the most... I, I always think that doing voice work is the kind of most freeing you can be as an actor, really. Yeah. Because yeah. you inevitably become physical, you know, but you don't have any of the inhibitions yeah, that people watch. I mean, I, yeah. you know, I forgot people are actually watching. Today. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, nobody's watching, so you can just do whatever you like. Yeah. Oh, wow, well, yeah. And Stefan, you have such an amazing voice. What did you think when you first got the casting call for this gruff Welsh fairy? I, With a lamp on their nose. I know. I mean, well, I was thrilled, to be honest because I, I it's rare to do you know really my truly my own accent yeah. which this is I mean I sometimes do different versions of Welsh accents in a Welsh but it's usually in a Welsh context you know it's rare to do uh, uh, my own accent so out of context in this fantasy you know magical mm. world yeah. but he still sounds like he comes from Morriston <laughs> where I come from and where, you know and um it was thrilling to do that, yeah. Oh, and, well, yeah. Well, I think you're going to come in and have a, a proper full-on chat with us oh, yeah, in, right a, in a little minute, I think. So uh, get, get your biscuits or whatever you've got in the room and <laughs> yeah, bring them with. And um, we will throw to obviously finding out why, you know, why we're here, which is obviously to raise money for the British Red Cross uh, for Ukraine. So if you have been inspired and excited by what you've seen today, please, please, please give whatever you can and here's how you can do it. Yes, you can make a donation to the British Red Cross for Operation Ukraine uh, by going to sideglobal.com forward slash Ukraine and there you will find the Tiltify fundraising page with all the details that you need 